Hello everyone, our topic at this time is about the great escape. That is about Jesus' second coming, rescued and united. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, be merciful to us, Lord. Forgive us for mercy and please give us clear minds and a clean heart, Lord, as we study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, my friends, in 2010, there were 33 miners trapped alive deep underground in a copper and gold mine in northern Chile. 17 days after the collapse, as workers removed a drill bit which had just completed a borehole, they found a handwritten note that said, We are well in the shelter, the 33. Together, these miners survived a record 69 days underground. Finally, the day came when the preparations were completed and the, the miners were to be lifted to the surface one by one. An estimated 1 billion people watched the television feed live as joyful families and national leaders greeted the heroic men emerging from that hole. The last miner coming out of the capsule held up a sign that read, Mission Accomplished Chile. The, res the rescue had been a tremendous success. Today, we are going to detail a rescue story in the Bible that is even more thrilling and exciting than the rescue of the Chilean miners. Unlike the fear and dread of many doomsday predictions, the Bible's account of how this world is going to end is filled with hope. The Bible says that the world will end with a triumphant return of Jesus Christ to this earth. This world's problems are beyond the help of human solutions. Only Jesus Christ and his kingdom can solve the challenges facing the human race. What a blessing it will be when the king returns. When the apostle Paul was a prisoner in the dark, damp, mamertine prison waiting for the executioner to chop off his head, he wrote that he was looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great and God and Savior, Jesus Christ, Titus 2.13. Paul wrote this encouraging letter to Titus, his true son in the faith, to remind him of the glorious coming of our Lord. If you find that your life at times has dark nights or discouraging circumstances, look up and remember that blessed hope, the second coming of Christ to, his, to this earth, that will make all things right. For Christians, the second coming is not just about our lives getting better. It's about being reunited with the one we love. If you ever watched people at the airport or the train station and seen the breathless anticipation of the waiting party as they strain their eyes for the first glimpse of the one they love. And then the joy and excitement when the reunion takes place. You understand just a little bit of why the second coming was near and dear to the heart of the disciples. They loved Jesus and they knew how much Jesus loved them, and they couldn't wait to see him in person again. The most talked about event in the New Testament is the second coming of Christ. Approximately one out of 25 verses is related to this occasion. Jesus himself spent more time talking about the second coming than about any other event in the New Testament. The longing of God's heart is to be reunited in person with you and me and the saved people of all the ages. One of Jesus' best known promises in is found in John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be. Also, John 14, 1 to 3. What a reunion Jesus' promises over the centuries. Whenever disappointment, hardship, or death have threatened Christ's followers, the promise of his return has brought them courage and strength to endure. Later in this life, not, be long before, not long before he was put to death, Paul triumphantly proclaimed, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Second Timothy 4, verse 7 and 8. Paul could bravely face the sword that day because he had faith in Christ's promise to return. And that promise belongs to you and me as well. When the disciples asked what the signs of his coming would be, Jesus gave a long list of events that would take place just before his return. Jesus said, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Later, Jesus elaborated further, For false Christs in Matthew 24, 24, and false prophets will rise up, will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Matthew 24, 24. In other words, Jesus is telling his followers that before the real second coming takes place, there will be counterfeits, which are imitations of things that are real, deceptions and cunning impersonations that almost the whole world will be deceived. These counterfeits will be convincing because they will accomplish through not supernatural power of Satan himself. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Second Corinthians 11, 13 and 14. What will be such what will what will be such pretenders be like? They may be very spiritual people. They may use the Bible when convenient and even perform healings and miracles. Many people will be deceived. But we dare not trust our senses. What we hear or what we see, or how we feel. There is only one safe guide for determining whether someone is genuine or an impostor. That is the Bible. The Bible. And the Bible has given clear signs of Christ's real coming so that we do not need to be deceived. Let's consider what the Bible says about Christ's return. Matthew 24 27. First, Christ's coming is a visible kind. It says, Matthew 24, 27, For as the lightning comes from the east to the west and flashes and to the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man V. Matthew 24, 27. In fact, Revelation 1, 7 says, Behold, He is coming with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. No one but Jesus can arrive at planet Earth like this. Underscoring the physical nature of Jesus' nature in his promise to return in the same manner that he left, surrounded by many of his disciples and followers on the Mount of Olives, Jesus rose into the sky while the crowd watched sorrowfully. Now, when he had spoken these things while they watched acts 1 9 he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight acts 1 9 but the early christians weren't left without promise and encouragement 
And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken for up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Acts 1, 10 and 11. In other words, the angels are promising that in the same very real way that Jesus left in the clouds, he will also return in the clouds. Jesus himself said in Luke 21, 27, then they will see the Son of Man come in a cloud with power and great glory. Luke 21, 27. No one will have to tell you when Jesus comes. You will see him coming in the clouds for yourself. But there are other signs of the coming, of the second coming, that the devil cannot copy. Second, Jesus will not be coming back alone. The angels be, will, be, will be with him and it will be glorious. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, Matthew 25, 31, then he will sit on the throne of his glory, Matthew 25, 31. Why does Jesus bring the angels with him? He gives the answer in Matthew 24, 31. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other, Matthew 24, 31. Jesus, accompanied by all the holy angels, will fill the sky with glory unimaginable. No false Christ can duplicate Jesus' return. Number three, third, we will hear him coming and the righteous dead will be raised back to life. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 Christ's coming will not only be visible, it will be also audible and heard by everyone. So penetrating will be the trumpet and voice of God that the dead in Christ will be resurrected. Can you imagine the joy when the graves are opened and families are reunited? Do you see how impossible it would be for Satan to imitate the real coming of Christ? Number four, the righteous living will be caught up with Christ. In 1 Thessalonians 4.17 says, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. The faithful followers of Jesus join the saved ones who are resurrected to meet the Lord in the air. What a happy reunion that will be for many families. The Apostle Paul likewise describes the scene. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 53. For this corruptible will be will put must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. God will give everyone who is saved in his kingdom the gift of life and life that never ends. All other gifts are meaningless without eternal life. And these immortal bodies will never again suffer pain or disease. We also eagerly wait for the Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, Philippians 3, 20, 21, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, Philippians 3, 20, 21. No more aches, no more pains. Number five, fifth, the earth as we know it will be destroyed. 
Revelation 6, 14 to 17. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, the rich men, the mighty men, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, for that great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Revelation 6, 14. To 17 and there were great there were great noises and thunderings and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth revelation 16 18 jesus warned that his coming will be at a time when few will be expecting it people will be wasting their lives on foolish pleasure when he comes, all the tribes of the earth will mourn, Matthew 24, 30. They will be sad or mourn because they are not ready. They will mourn because they don't know that Jesus, the Jesus who is coming to rescue his beloved ones and to be reunited with them. They will mourn because they are lost, lost forever and they know it. What a sad day for them. And how different could that have been? There will be no going back, no more chances, no more waking up and realizing it was only a dream. Nothing is more important than being ready to meet Jesus when he comes. Luke 21, 36 says, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Luke 21, 36. Let us review, my friends, quickly what we have learned as we have studied the Bible together about the second coming. Number one, false Christs and false prophets will try to deceive everyone. The devil can appear as an angel of light. The second coming will not be a secret. Every eye will see Jesus coming. All the holy angels will come with Jesus. He will come with a loud sound of a trumpet. He will come with a shout of an archangel. And the righteous dead will be resurrected, will be raised back from raised from their graves. The righteous living will be translated to heaven without seeing death. All the righteous will be given immortality. They will live forever. All of the earth's ungodly people will mourn when they see Jesus. A great earthquake will destroy the earth. All the lost will perish and die. Yes, my friend, the second coming will be a surprise for many, but it won't be for a surprise for those who are watching and waiting for it. The Apostle Paul assures the believers that they have nothing to fear in anticipation of Christ's return. 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 and 5 But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are the sons of light, and the sons of the day, you are not the night of the night, nor of darkness. First Thessalonians 5, 4 and 5. For those who are walking in the light of God's word, this will be a wonderful day. For those who love Jesus, this will be the best day of their lives. The one who loves them, who died for them, who has saved them, is coming to be reunited with them. They will not be frightened or surprised, we, but will shout with victory, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for Him, and He will save us. Isaiah 25, 9. What a wonderful day it will be. All human imperfections and deformities are left behind. Angels gather the saved from one end of the earth to the other. Little children are carried by holy angels to their mother's arms. Friends long separated by death are reunited, never again to be parted. With songs of gladness, they rise together to the city of God. Jesus, with his own right hand, places a crown of glory upon the heads of those who have overcome. Great joy fills every heart and every voice is heard, is raised in grateful Praise before the great multitude of people who are saved in the holy city. 
Jesus opens wide the pearly gates, and from every nation enter those who have kept the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then that voice, richer than any music that has ever been heard, saying, Matthew 25, 34, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew 25, 34. Jesus invites us to come to him just as we are and simply let him prepare us for his soon return. He invites us to simply trust in the Bible, his word, his promises, his love. He invites us to today to make the choice to be part of his eternal kingdom in heaven. Isn't that the choice you want to make, my friend? Will you say yes? In his appeal right now? How many would like to join me now in telling Jesus, yes, yes, I want to be there. I'm not going to let anything prevent me from being there ready for that day. Why don't you stand with me together as we pray tonight? Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the Bible. We thank you that you are coming to save us. You are coming to rescue us from this world, from sin. We thank you for, for your forgiveness, for the salvation that you have planned for everybody. We ask that help that you help us accept your offer. Help us live the life that you want us to live. Help us to obey. Help us to follow you wherever you go. Thank you for forgiving us from all our many sins and giving us opportunity to help save other people also. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.